My name is Rhapsody, welcome back to Slice and Dice. We continue our Blurst run on our second loop now. That is to say, we've completed the game two times. We are on our third loop, sorry. We have Shiny, plus two item quality, Fizzing for at the start of the first turn, getting plus two mana, and one extra reroll across the board. We've also got negative max mana. We've got some armor on enemies at the start of the second turn. Tier three heroes have less HP. Bigger enemies have more HP. X, Y, and Z have more, uh, more HP. Sandstorm doing damage at the end of every second turn. Death Shield, whenever a monster dies, all of their allies will gain one mana. And we need to choose one blessing here for ourselves. I'm almost leaning towards boss match. Just during boss levels, all heroes get plus one to all sides. Let's do it. Make those bosses a little bit more of a walk in the park for us. Hmm. Some very, very appealing sides so far. Buckle, do you want to keep someone alive? That'd be really nice. Okay. So a two swing on either of these characters keeps someone alive. Except the Mystic isn't going to be taking damage eventually here. The cut takes out the... Wait, the cut does not take out the rat, of course. Because of the shielding, everyone... I do not love the death shield. I mean, so far, so good. It should all get us across the line. Cultus generates enough to set up a single burst for the kill. Scrapper versus Herbalist. I really enjoy taking the Herbalist of late. Mm. Actually, increasing each of these by one in a boss fight is way more impactful on the Herbalist than it is on the Scrapper. So for that reason, I'll take the Herbalist. A Nolan of Thorn against us. Two mana, five. Some damage to the relevant target. That kills it. Hmm. Ultimately, I'm trying to just... Actually, this might be right. Ultimately, got, uh, the goal here is to kill the Knoll on the top side using all of these abilities and then defend and heal myself so adequately that once we get back to the Thorn, they run away. Don't want to have to deal with them personally. Lich's Tome, plus one to all sides, but after you use this dice, Summoner Bones, very, very, very threatened by that one, but not super keen, and Autumn uh, Leaf, add growth to the rightmost side. Not relevant on anyone just yet, but it can become relevant. I mean, you know, we'll put it on the cultist just in case we happen to need to use that side. And happen to need to use it again in the next turn. Ooh. I do like that poison. Ruffy, and that's some of your best damage without having to die for it. even more poison to a target. That certainly has an appeal if we can keep the lost alive. Cultist, please. Thank you. So if I send a single burst to the top line, we save the cultist. Well, I guess we can also do that with a cut. Ultimately, I'm just trying to make sure that... There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next turn, the goblin is alone and runs away immediately. Sinew and Monk. Hmm. Little difficult to give up on... Uh, on access to four damage in a single instance, but the Monk with shield one repel sides is going to be very well served in boss fights past this point, what with all the AoE in them. Let's take the Monk. 
up against the wolf and the alpha, so we are in our first boss fight, hence everything having an extra uh, plus one to it. Cool, baby. That's what you're looking for. Um, Actually, my cultist might be a little bit of an issue here. I'm going to have to shield my cultist rather than shield the herbalist who would do two damage to both targets on the field, because otherwise I will lose it before we actually even start trying to attack. Uh, so a single vine to that cultist to keep it alive. Burst and cut takes out the next. Actually, before we do that, I'm going to do as much damage as possible to that alpha. Then we send out that cut. Alpha has one health next round and they die. On the first turn, no less. Cracked wheel. Cannot be re-rolled, but you get plus one for all other re-rolls. I'm not, I'm not entirely against that side. However, we are also being offered harpoon. Replace the right side with one damage vulnerable. One damage vulnerable and then also make that growth. Yes. Monster HP, get plus one HP for every seven base HP. We'll give you that. Uh, Ruffian. Yeah, that's a pretty good side view. Slammer and Quartz up against us. Lost, you have the ability to dodge incoming three. Dodging three right now is pretty efficient in terms of a defensive uh, turn for you. So I'll let it slip. You can have that. Okay. With the ruffian's vulnerability set up and having enough mana to cast vine basically as many times as we like, we should be able to guarantee to kill on the courts here in the first round. Uh, so then I'm looking for the ability to support the cultist more afterwards. I'll do it. Uh, one there, vine. Actually, hang on, we vine and then hit, and then vine and vine and there goes the corpse. Dodge. I'm just gonna use two vines for health on my cultist as well here. Seems the best way to get value out of the rest of that turn. A bit of poison for the enemy. I suspect we're not going to be killing them in a single turn here. So I'll take it. Monk, I really would prefer if you self-directed the damage here. Well, now we're off in the ability possibly to kill them. In time. Let's give this a go. Big damage. Big damage. One, two, and... Vine takes one off the field, but we lose one of our targets to the Sandstorm. I'm okay with losing the Ruffian to the Sandstorm here. Makes the rest of the fight so much more comfortable. Uh, we'll do that in the opposite order in order to sneak that damage in under the Slimelet's armor. Berserker and Evoker. <clears throat> Good hits. Good hits here. Uh, Berserker retains some of our ability to do some AoE in these fights. Evoker just giving us more mana and bigger payoffs for that mana. I'm taking the Berserker here. It's been a while since I've taken a Berserker, and the Berserker is good. It's very good. Incredibly good, actually. Uh, having one character generate vulnerability and then two characters just generate mana and hit with a bunch of vines is actually one of the most powerful things we're capable of doing. So we want to try and make sure that the harpoon and the autumn leaf are never on herbalist and cultist. They have more important things to do. Um, okay. Three people are targeting blue. That's a pretty good, uh, pretty good target for us then. Berserker doing three damage rather than trying to do four and taking pain. I think I would prefer. We're looking for mana on the herbalist, obviously. And I'll take the poison on the lost, certainly. Cultist. 
Are you just gonna roll one the entire time? Hilarious. Okay. So the damage is slight, and then the monk defends the cultist. Taking off two enemies from the board. Uh, in fact, I can also just take out the illusion on the top line, and we'll do. Then if I use a cut and a vine, I can sneak a little bit of extra damage in there as well. Noting that it really shouldn't matter because three instances of damage this turn should be trivial to accomplish. Um, I mean, that'll get us through the armor in the first place, and those are instances of damage. That's already enough. But my slate, hello, sling, or monocle. So monocle is engage on the middle side, times two, two targets with the full HP. That's pretty good for monk. Possibly repelling a target for two or up to four in a boss fight. Because this is a times two multiplier, so the boss fight, I'm assuming, adds, you know, <laughs> one to one to make two and then times by the monocle, rather than one times two plus one. Assuming there's brackets there that make that, you know, the correct order in which it would resolve. Um, I'll have to deal with Pedmas or whatever the heck. Sling or monocle. Or a random five. I could take a random five as well. Nothing wrong with that. I'm assuming if the target has more HP than you. How many times are we casting something against a target that has more HP than us and we want to double it at the moment? Not commonly. For things that we can curate into the future. Hmm. Ish. Let me take the monocle. And we will give it to the monk. Okay, two folk are attacking the same target in the Monk here. Both bandits. But all I need to do is overkill Soodle, in fact, which I already have. As long as I do it in any reasonable order. Ba -ba 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 -ba. <sighs> Both of them run. Dabbler and Mycologist. I don't know if the Mycologist Spore is really what I want in this run, but it is the ability to generate a dense amount of mana very, very quickly, which can then be turned into more ping triggers. Hmm. Do I have slow spells or anything like that? No, I have fizzing and negative max mana. I'm gonna take Dabbler. A little bit of a coward's option right there, but I'm fine with it. Cultist, I may not be able to afford to use you for mana necessarily in a fight like this, so you hold the harpoon and the growth. We have enough mana generation on other characters with the dabbler and the, uh, the herbalist in particular. Alrighty then. Monk is being attacked by two people. Please, Monk, if you could hit the right side, I would be really appreciative. That is the... Uh, this has got to be good enough, unfortunately. I was looking for the engaging defense side, but we'll settle for this. Okay, so Monk is the first target on board here to die. Githa deals damage to the middle enemy when attack... Okay, so if we take Githa out this round, we should be fine. There's some vulnerability for you. Monk defends yourself, doing... To the top line and the middle line, then same there again. Let's set poison on Agnes on the top line, getting Agnes to lose the top flame ability at the start of the next turn. Vine and... Uh, I guess three vines is the same as using another burst at that point, that's okay. There goes Githa. And... I'll also burst to defend the cultist, just in case I want to try and use that for some mana next turn. Berserker, four damage without even having to sacrifice yourself. We'll have to take that. And no one else here has rolled their best, I don't think. Ooh, baby. These count. 
these absolutely count. I'm going to start off by setting up vulnerability on McGrath. Then the monk is going to defend the dabbler. Yeah, this doesn't need to be tricky at all, in fact. We just have the kills. Ink bottle scales max. Oh no. Scales max. Set the value of your rightmost side to the maximum of your other side's values. This means that the one damage vulnerable can be four damage vulnerable. Very easily, it's just put the harpoon and the scales on the same person. There's also ink bottle here. Place blank sides with shield one cantrip. Well, having the blank sides be shield one cantrip and then possibly putting growth on them actually also pretty good, but the idea of the scales being able to propagate four vulnerability to a target when, you know, mana generates, you know, five damage per mana at that point through vine. Yeah, you have to take the scales. That also then I think means we put it on the Berserker and the Berserker then just gets the scalies for it. There you go. Heavy dice versus... Ugh, spiky! All hero-sized enemies such as Wolf get spiky one. Cannot roll more than three dice at a time from heavy dice. Heavy dice has been surprisingly less problematic for me than I have thought it would be often, and has sometimes forced me to be more pragmatic with my decision making than I otherwise might in a way that has, I think, assisted me. But there's a random tier one curse. What if that's... The vines! I don't want to talk about it. Who could have known that would happen? All right, let's see what we can get done now, though. Berserker, I can't just rely on you rolling exactly the side I am asking for. But that doesn't need to be the side you use either way. Never mind, you rolled exactly the side I was asking for, and then we got mana to support it as well. Yup. Okay. I'm going to defend red. Taking out the illusion on the bottom line. Bunch of mana sets up for two vines to take out one target by itself there. First. Ah, right, of course. Can't continue after this point. Well, guess I should probably burst to defend one of my targets. Bunch of mana that I have. Don't need it all. Don't need any of it, frankly. Guess I'll keep the HP on the cultist instead then. Oof. Goodbye to the illusion and hello to Fiend and Jester. Neither of you have a particularly good offering for our uh, engaging side, that is to say for holding the monocle nor holding the autumn leaf. Jester with the capability of doing two damage to a single target on a cooldown with one mana via flick, not really what we want to be casting. Fiend also not really... Ugh. Maybe with the Fiend we don't need to use the Herbalist for mana anymore. Well, I guess, yeah, the Dabbler definitely should have been holding the shield growth side that entire time, I suspect. Yeah, so that's the way for us to go. Up against Jinx F. Top and bottom heroes, if you've gained no shields this turn, time to the incoming damage. Cool. I mean, not cool, but cool. Four damage to a single target in a single action would be sick. 
So we should continue rolling with Berserker for the possibility to do that to the Zomba. Uh, Jinx F, I'm going to have you directly attack away from the Dabbler because you're not in the middle, so you won't have to worry about that. Also, you will be defending, so you doubly won't have to worry about that. Keep pushing. One more time. And I'll settle on you, and Fiend, you may push one more time as well. Thank you. Or on a single target, takes out that zombie. Noting that I'm not killing Jinx F afterwards, I should just do all my damage to them first. Oh! They haven't defended, so they're taking double damage already. So I have to defend you in order to get more mana from you to then double use mana. Weird. Works out, but weird. Alright, Jinx F, seven damage. We can get that together, I'm certain. Ooh, the Berserker's already almost dead about it. That'll get it done. Goodbye, Jinx F. Hello, Demon Claw. Demon Claw adds rampage and plus one. Uh, sorry, negative one to the left side. So it can be reused if it's lethal, but negative one to its value. I mean, the Berserker, if they were taking lethal on any turn, they would be able to use this very, very effectively to just try and shh, cut targets down. Boots of Speed, plus one re-roll. I mean, I do like it. There's no one really wants to hold it at the moment. It, the Demon Claw can help choose my upgrade for both the red and yellow class at this point. Do I want to re-roll Herbalist? I mean, I did just lose one of my best synergies that Herbalist is providing us. Yeah, let's re-roll Herbalist. Druid is... I guess I have Druid now. Um... I'm gonna give Druid the growth rampage side. Possibility that I can just set up effectively for it. I don't know. We'll see. Crazier things have happened. Monk, you can redirect attacks to yourself this round. I guess you might as well take that off of the Dabbler. Dabbler has a growth side there. No, I don't really put my mana. Eh, damage is fine too. Okay. So general idea to me here is we have burn and we have balance, which to me typically says uh, use burn, deal one damage away to everyone on the field, and then use balance to deal one health to your characters, getting them back to full, and one more damage to the enemies. Two damage to all enemies, cool. Two actions, four mana. Neat. So Quartz, seven HP will... If they have two HP left, they'll die, so you need to do eight. Which means a burn and a balance, and two, three targets against a single character takes them out. Burn, balance. Uh, and who do I need least? Sorry, who do I need most next turn? Who do I need to retain as much HP as possible on? And as much of their effect as possible? I suspect it's the, the Berserker. Because without the Berserker, I don't have the ability to kind of like instantly bop down targets in the next turn. 4 HP on these Feudals makes that certainly a uh, reasonable possibility. I'm going to start working on a secondary target though. Because we will have to remove more of the Quartz. And in fact, that's another character with uh, only 4 HP until it... Well, 5 HP until it dies. Right, I forgot it was going to have 1 damage given to it here at the start of this round. Uh, Monk, you can redirect from someone who's gonna die to yourself right now, and that's a great idea. I suspect the Druid and Fiend literally cannot do anything this... Well, Fiend, you can generate one mana, possibly. Hmm. 
So we lose the Berserker here. Hmm. It's a choice to lose the Berserker rather than the Quartz. Quartz is saved with that action instead. We lose the Monk. Berserker is more likely to be able to do lethal damage next turn against the target. Another Quartz is off the field earlier rather than later. We lose the ability to have the Monk's input, unfortunately, but I think otherwise that's the better play for us here. Healing a target by two as well as uh, cleansing them. Not awful right now for the possibility of setting up for the Fiend doing something, because otherwise the Fiend's doing nothing this round, whereas the Fiend may heal up to full HP this round. Uh, the only thing is we're probably going to need to lose a character. Oh, wow. Berserker gets their best side by far. Let's see what we can do with this. So, Berserker, with that set up, you can literally just immediately take a target off the field. Doesn't matter who they are. And then we can start defending the Dabbler. We lose the Berserker as well here. Is there any alternative play? What about like heal the Berserker so that I can use a burn? And then I just lose more people. Hmm, yeah, it's not really the play I'm looking for. I realize I've let these feudals kind of just run absolute riot over us while trying to deal with the quarters. I suspect that if I didn't deal with the quarters in time, I was not going to be able to deal with feudals after the fact. Uh, yeah, I mean, four healing to a target's pretty sick. And then... Burn and balance. Wait. I'm just gonna burn and then double burst one of the targets down. Come on, Soodle. You don't need to drag this out, do you? You can just concede. Give us the benefit of the doubt, buddy. There's no doubt. You're going down. 52. Up against the Wanderer and Kronos. Hey, the Wanderer is gonna have two damage quad use. In all of the boss fights, the Kronos is going to have two reroll in the boss fights. Also, the ability to weaken with cleave on those spells. I'm going to take the Kronos. I think it's totally reasonable. Um. I also think I'm going to give the Dabbler the five vulnerable setup here. Setting up the Berserker's ability to do Rampage Death Wish because we've got all these bones and I should be able to do some kind of sick and nasty rampaging stuff through them. Unfortunately, this does displace the Autumn Leaf, which will no longer really have anywhere to go. Uh, this two damage cleave, however... Giving that engage, rolling that on the first turn, is ridiculous for removal of bones. Okay. Fight night. Hilarious. Dabbler does roll the five vulnerability. Berserker also rolls their, uh, their threatened side. Is great. Just need a little bit more mana. There's a little bit more mana for us. Monk, do you need to reroll? No, not really. Sure. Okay. First, let's set up five vulnerability on the rotten. Shouldn't be difficult at all to take them out now. Then I'll use a 
balance to start setting up targets that I can rampage through. One. You've got five vulnerability on you, right? Yeah, so... Two, and then... Three... Four... Wait, hang on. <laughs> Six! Goodbye! First turn! Olympian Trident had cleaved to the middle side, or the Iron Blood Pendant has come back to us. Plus three to incoming healing and shields on a character. Uh, yeah, engage and cleave, both on the same side with an Olympian Trident. I do like the idea of it. Bottom poison or boss armor during the boss levels during the start of the first turn. Shield two to all enemies. I'm going to give the bosses armor, noting that I have plus one as a little bit of an offset towards that. Engage and cleave on the monk here. Although with the basilisk, we will just lose that side basically as soon as we activate it. that's a good enough reason to give the druid the ability to defend us in cleave engage yeah let's see how that does druid immediately defends uh 12 hp with a single action i think that's pretty neat i think that's Pretty swell. I could also start trying to roll slow against the enemies here. Uh, Dabla still does have the damage side. Never mind. All right. Um. Just gonna throw four damage to that berserker. A slow in the center, preventing the poison even coming out from the bandit, as well as a lot of incoming damage here. Uh, leave for that defense, and yeah, prevent all incoming poison, which I guess we were already doing even without the slow. Got to see the monk. All of this is in service of the idea that we can overkill that ogre, or oh, nice. uh, that we can overkill that ogre, making the bandit run away. An instance of damage from you is actually pretty good right now. Okay. Dabla. Set a big vulnerability there, then Berserker, you can kill that target in a single action. Not with enough overkill, however. So, set that up in a slightly different order. That's enough overkill to make the bandit run away. Mike, make sure that the Berserker is attacking at full capacity next round. Yeah, I guess I'll burst the enemy too. I don't think that was super intelligently handled there at the very end. I probably could have taken down the Basilisk with different focus. but it also ought not cause us any problems. There we go. Pretty difficult to get ahead of damage like that. Forsaken and Paladin. Forsaken having all of those with plus one in boss fights is pretty wild. Could have Autumn Leaf on the Heal to All Allies. Reasonable sign to want to have Grow. Paladin for a little bit more immediate heal and shield on the same target. Not always what we're looking for, admittedly. I'm going to take the Forsaken. I don't take them often enough, I feel bad about it. I really feel like I can get so much more use out of them if I just give them the time of day.
Not sure how much I'm going to get out of the Rampage Death Wish on the Berserker right now. Up against a Ghost Sniper and a Spiker. Monk offers us the ability to do... Uh, to basically, to kill the Monk in the first round. Will this die? Will you die? Uh, the Monk does four damage to themselves through that. I thought it was going to be worse. Still cool. Anyway, you'll be taking that side. Dabbler. Yeah, Dabbler, it's hard to settle on you when you still have access to that giant vulnerable side. Double up. Huge mana. Berserker, you also have a much better side. Ooh. Berserker, please. Whee! I guess that kind of counts. Okay, um... Big vulnerability on you, and on the ghost, and then big defense there, kills everyone on the field. Except for this sniper, and can finish you off with an attack. Every single spell. Charged hammer and bullseye. Charged hammer and the demon claw represent the ability just to go absolutely hog wild all over the enemies. Combo of just those two on any character makes them insane. That's it, I can totally see us just using it here. It can only be against the heaviest target, so the targets do need to have less HP than it. Uh, second, that's cool. Dabbler, you still have the ability to kill in a single action. Kronos, you can reinforce other people. Still a lot of shielding there from the monk. There's nothing else. I'll take those, actually. Because we can still make something pretty good out of this turn. Let's start off with a big old defend. Mana mana. Then... Four damage to a target to take them off the field. And not someone who's attacking the Berserker. Let's target this Knoll. Actually, hang on, I don't need to do that first, right? If I get the Monk to do the self-defense there. Actually, if I don't use Binds this turn, I'm going to need to take out one of the Knolls that's attacking the Berserker in particular. In fact, I have to take out both. One, two, three. There goes the Knoll. No bursts to follow up here. I mean, you know, we should keep someone a little bit healthier. Maybe the Dabbler on the top side. Only two of these gnolls are actually going to be attacking next turn. The other two exerted themselves. Flew fast out the gate. Ooh, Berserker, just absolutely eliminate each and every one of these, if you will. Thank you and appreciate it. Brawler offers the opportunity to do that with a steel side? I don't know. I feel like we already have enough access to Rampage ourselves. I'm leaning mostly towards Poet instead right now, but then the Monocule, uh, Monocule, the Monocle rather, and the Olympian Trident suddenly don't have mm, anywhere to go. Unless... Unless I did something like, Poet, you are now the the Rampage class. And Berserker... Well, I guess that side already had Cleave. Oops. Uh, Berserker, you're now the vulnerable class? Dabbler, you have the ability to do 
AoE damage. I mean, it's the best it can be right now, so sure. Also maintains the ability to do a ridiculous amount of damage in a single turn, if that's what the game is calling for at the time. I think Dabbler can hit pretty much any side that is not health and be happy with it. Watch your mana. Berserker, do you want to continue rolling past that point? Sure. Damage to a single. Sure. Let's go. Um, there's your big first swing. This is 5th, 14. We actually do have the ability to kill the Troll King outright and then start work on the slate afterwards. Get some extra healing out of the Forsaken. One, two. I think the slate runs. Yeah. <laughs> Turn one again. Mithril Shields. Adds cantrip to all shield slash self shield sides. Uh, yeah, I think not at this point. Diamond Skull plus two max HP upon death plus one to all allied sides this fight. I also think not. We could bring people back, but do I really want to try and get the Berserker to die just to give plus one to everyone else in the the fight? Like it seems like we're better served by just keeping the Berserker alive and consistently active, especially with our support to do so at the moment. We're taking random tier ten. Leads to the top and the bottom. High handcuffs. Or single use. And taking a random one again. Add cooldown to burst. Oh, our spells. Our spells. They've been limited. Putting cleave on the berserker's damage sides here would be pretty sick. There is also a world where a shield 1 cantrip suddenly becomes a shield 10 cantrip. <laughs> I don't think it's a good world, but I do think it's a world that could exist. Yeah, we've got a lot of items that are really, really good on characters that we don't have. <laughs> Or unless you may also have the ability to give someone one vulnerable, this fight should not call for it. Really? Come on! You could have just hit the other side, poet! There's some cleave. Forsaken the ability to heal someone on party after the cleaving attack from the Berserker. Not that bad. Uh... Push. I don't know if I want the poet to lock in a mana side here. Also, I'm not really even seeing the benefit out of the four damage we do in AoE here because then the whiz just heals them back up. Since I can't do enough damage in the whiz uh, to the whiz in the back line in order to prevent it from even taking its action this round, which makes it feel like I should be re-rolling the. Forsaken, as well as maybe even the Berserker. Three roll Forsaken. Hmm. Okay, I'm looking for more mana. Got some. So the poet now has access to a 13 damage charged attack. With those two setups, the poet should now have the ability to just rampage through the entire enemy party. 58 leaves us with the assassin and the leader. Uh I mean the assassin? Yeah, the assassins, not bad. Can can certainly get some value out of cleave on them. Let's 
especially cleave ranged in this fight. Seems appropriate. Let's return Berserker to the glory days of the four vulnerable, because that does seem very sick on them right now. Add cleave to the middle side, sure. Give that to the assassin. Add engage to the middle side. Literally no one I can currently put that on wants it. Uh, well, that's fine by me. Assassin hit 12 damage. Thank you. That's 12 damage on the first turn of this fight. The Forsaken giving everyone two health. Looks good to me too. Poet, obviously there's some better stuff you can do. Kronos. You kind of live to possibly just give other people the ability to do their extra rerolls here. I'm just going to lock in your mana rather than go too deep on you. Ouch. Not the resolution we wanted there at the end. Okay. Bunch of max HP to a bunch of different targets on the field. Four damage to the Demon Basilisk and Spiker each. We can set a single slow to the enemy party in order to prevent uh, eight, nine, nine damage total across the party. Could be worse, could be better. We should try and get one off the field pretty quickly here. It feels like the demon is going to be the most problematic for us, so I'll strike at them first. Range Cleave is still as good as the Assassin's really going to go. Berserker, you have two sides that are significantly better than that. We have four rolls as well as a reroll cantrip here. I think I'm going to push Forsaken. That definitely seems like your best side. Berserker, continue to push until you get something that doesn't just kill you for using it, please. Or not. That's fine, too. I didn't mean to be pushy. I apologize. Um, Poet strike the spiker, and then you may go again, and then kill one. Oh, hang on. Not going to be able to kill the basilisk, of course. Or not going to be able to do anything after killing the Basilisk, rather. Uh, that's okay. As long as I set it up appropriately, we can get both of them down. We lose the Forsaken as well by doing that. Still probably the easiest way for us to close that fight. Alright, demon. I've had enough of you. I want to see the big bad boss after you. Well, I guess after after you. No damage assistance from anyone else there, so it's just going to be the demon. And... Oh god, Kronos, please. Kronos, some damage. That'll do. That'll do. Goodbye to the demon. Hello to Whirlwind and Blue Skink. Blue Skink? Let's think about this for a second. Let's skink about it. Replace the... Replace all sides with the hero below's base sides. Retaining your side's value. And keywords. Your side's value and keywords. So we would keep Cantrip on the Poet, who would also inherit Heal 2 to all other allies Pain Vitality Cantrip, as well as Heal 2 to all allies Cantrip. Uh, hmm. 
Whirlwind, adds Cantrip to the middle column. The idea of putting that on the Kronos, who's then growing mana consistently. That's what we're doing. Too good to turn that down. Jinx HW as well as Zombie. HW being the reason all of our attacks are heavy in this fight, unfortunately. Three mana from the Forsaken is one of the best things they can do on turn one. Don't turn that down. Uh, defense to all of our team is pretty good, but the Poet still does have the ability to just roll the instant kill on everyone. Mmm, all this mana and I can't do anything with it. Uh... I'm going to first kill the zombie. Yeah. First kill the zombie. Then I'm going to slow Jinx HW and the two snipers on either side, killing them with cleave. I'll defend my squad, and then I am going to run out two more slows here, just to reduce incoming damage more efficiently than I otherwise would, as well as use mana more efficiently than I otherwise might have been able to. Big. Yes, big number. Get him, poet. Yeah, absolutely love to see something like that go off. Challenge Tamo, replacing the left side with the 10 damage heavy. The Demon Claw for the Rampage. Bash and Barbarian. Well, I gotta say, that Barbarian does have the ability to hold the, the charged heavy, etc. or whatever. I could also just take the Barbarian by themselves here. They are going up against Hexia, so maybe the Barbarian is a worse choice for us right now. I'll tell you what, the Poet's going to have a really difficult time actually using the Heavy Charge Rampage, because they'll have to attack Hexia directly first. So just imagine, well, I mean, Kronos, you do probably hold the Growth Cantrip, that seems... Pretty absurd, pretty ridiculous, pretty spectacular, pretty cool and pretty neat and honest and fun and handsome and being handsome and good and nice. Uh, but what else could we get done? Giving, I mean, keeping Cleave on these ranged engaged sides does seem really good. Ranged attacks avoid the on-hit negative that we would otherwise have to deal with from the boss there. Forcing someone else to repeat an action is pretty sick as well. Adding engage on the middle left side. Taking bash. The engage on the middle left side, as well as the cleave, sets up for a bash that can truly dominate the field. Uh, the vulnerability with the scales, I would love to see. I really would. I know I'm taking a while here, I've just got some final, final thoughts, specifically like Kronos, you could hold this, you're not going to be repeating actions, but Kronos, if we give you target ally becomes immune to damage this turn, bind, so 3 mana, negative 4 max HP this fight, you can generate that mana yourself quite effectively with your cantrip signs, um, if we do give that to you, then you have the ability to just stand there and happily throw damage directly at Hexia's face without 
care at all. And in fact, we can cast as many spells as we want that turn without care at all. Because again, Cronus is on the bottom side. Uh, I do like the double dip there. Let's get Cantrip on this growth side. This Demon Claw is not doing anything for anyone right now. So sorry, Demon Claw. And Forsaken, I don't think we need your AoE heal as much as a four vulnerable, giving us the potential of taking out Hexia very easily and very quickly with just spells, basically. Uh, is good and better. Lego. Kronos immediately gets the bigger side. Unfortunately, can't give them the ability to use the immediate uh, bigger side there. Pretty much everyone needs to push, unfortunately. Hmm. Probably give someone the ability to retake a turn. Forsaken with four mana. We don't need the mana on the Forsaken. That's not what we want them to generate. Go for the three damage, ranged engage and cleave. Try and take out some of these imps as well as Hexia. Um, I wonder if I give the assassin the ability to cast again here. Taking out the, not taking out the other imp, really? Not enough damage for the other imp as it turns out. We will be using slow, then a, Bind on my own Kronos, preventing them from dying, but losing some max HP. And then another slow against the enemy. Five damage, so this... Well, actually, hang on. Instead of preventing Kronos from dying that way, I'm going to just slow losing Kronos. Then... Revive Kronos. Well... Do I want to revive Kronos before I cast the spell? No. Two damage to you. Bring Kronos back. I mean, with what I have in terms of resources right now, I shouldn't have to worry about anything. These resources amount to a kill, but I did want to try and make sure that I could get access to Bind here so that I can keep Kronos alive. Goodbye, Hexia, and welcome to the end. We are on 61. We are finally here in a fourth loop. We have the ability, should we only get eight more floors into the future, to get that goal, that number. But for the moment, boss smash. Plus three during boss fights or middle shield. All heroes add self shield to the middle side. Plus three in all boss fights actually might be the clincher we're looking for here for the moment though. Random tier eight blessing, what? Oh, for the moment, my name is Rhapsody, the name of the game. Has been Slice and Dice series playlist up in that top left YouTube, uh, YouTube recommendation down below. Stream past the names of people who so are generally supporting the Republic on Patreon.com slash Rhapsody Plays at or above the thank tier. And a special thanks to this episode to Sora Hill. Hopefully, you're enjoying yourselves, and hopefully, we'll see you all next time.